All right, we got another sweet fish plays. This is going to be episode 13 now of our The Last of Us series. Episode 13. Good old lucky number 13. It's got to bring us some good luck. A couple playthroughs that I've done, it's been a very lucky number for me. So, uh, there's that. Uh, we have made our way to Salt Lake City. In particular, we are trying to head towards St. Mary's Hospital, which... Uh, is said to uh, contain some of the last Firefly scientists uh, that may be able to uh, do something with Ellie, uh, extract a cure, something along those lines. So uh, we'll see what we have in store. Now that we're pretty close to end, we are right now. If I remember we're playing it on the PS3 correctly, uh, I remember this being one of the last uh, sequences. If you watched the last episode, there was a hell of a lot of fighting going on. Uh, particularly in these little freeway tunnels uh, that we've been making our way through to to get closer to uh, to the hospital. So back to controlling Joel. We've spent the last couple episodes kind of flip flopping between him and Ellie, which was kind of cool and something that I didn't remember uh, the first time through. Beautiful uh, opening shot here. We'll do a quick inventory. We're getting a little low in our flamethrower here, so I'm gonna go. We'll go rifle and shotgun. Seems to make the most sense. We'll uh, we'll chill with the revolver for now. So as per usual, Ellie can't swim, so it seems that the goal here is to try and find a way uh, for her to get across here. That is actually St. Mary's Hospital. Uh, just there at the top, you can see the name. Scrawled across the top. Let's see if we got anything underwater. There's a, another doorway. Looks like we could probably swim through there. Uh, we... Well, let's try it. see a whole lot happening. Jesus. That was a dead body in the water there if you didn't catch that. A loaded dead corpse. That's no good. I think I'm going the right way here. I'm pretty sure this is not the way that I came from, so that's a good sign. But how the hell get up there? I need to get up there, he says. All right, we're in. So this should lead back to the room that Ellie is, is in. Tight squeeze, hold your breath. You cool, girl? Where are you at? You made it. So now, I'm pretty sure we can just fall back down, and we should be able to just push this platform across to her. She should be able to jump up there. We should be golden. All right. Get on. Okay. A little bit of Here. repetition. I'm on it. Be careful. I got you. 
But then again, you could just look at uh, of it as, uh, you know, more backstory for her. Her ability to not be able to swim has impacted us in so many different ways. But, uh, like, some, at so many different points. But the puzzle has more or less been the same. Find the, uh... Find the platform she can jump on, bring it to her, push her across to the other side. Good as new. broke up the wall. Now what? I'll figure something out. Okay. Now we're now we got like three quarters of a ladder. So it looks like we have to place it along this wall. That should get us back up to the same uh, part that we were at before where we pushed the platform down into the water so she could swim across. Now we have to grab the ladder, bring it up with us. And now when we drop down, we should be able to uh, use the ladder as a bridge to get across to the other side where Ellie is at. So we drop down there. Fall down. Grab said ladder. And place across here. Oh, I see. Good idea. Thanks, Ellie. It's nice to know somebody believes in me. So this underground sign says hospital tunnel route access. Authorized personnel only, but I'm authorized personnel, right? The world depends on us, right? It's been fun. I mean, uh, sometimes playing a video game a second time around can be a little bit stale and hard to get through, but uh, I, I felt that at times, but um, oh, for the boy. most part, it's been a good experience Let me once go again. ahead, and you follow my lead. Okay, right behind you. God damn. Holy. So we got a huge current running through here. We won't be able to cross this quite as easily as we did with the platform. Damn, talk about repetition and breaking. It's a bit of a curveball in the whole Ellie can't swim phenomena. No, don't fall in the water, Joe. Bad idea. I'm just gonna take my rifle out. See if I can't see anything or anybody. I don't. No, Go get ahead. up, get up, get up. <laughs> Doing my best. Come on, jump. You're gonna catch me? I got you. See? You didn't even need me. Let's get the hell off this thing. I had a chance to try and grab onto things with 
triangle button. That's pretty cool. I missed most of them, but I was able to still grab hold. We gotta figure out where to go here. He's gone now. Jesus. So we just gotta try and avoid things in the current here. It's gonna take us. Oh shit, Allie. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Swim. Swim, Joel. Jesus, swim. Holy oh, Christ. <laughs> A lung herder, that one. A lung burner. Hands in the air. She's not breathing. Hands in the fucking air! Come on, man. <laughs> well, we got a new group of people, folks. That's interesting. Welcome to the Fireflies. Sorry about that. They didn't know who you were. And Ellie? She's alright. They brought her back. <sighs> you came all this way. How'd you do it? It was her. <clears throat> she fought like hell to get here. Yeah, it was not easy. Trust me. It was meant to be. <clears throat> We're just that kick ass, I guess. I lost most of my crew across in the country. I pretty much lost everything. And then you show up, and somehow we find you just in time to save her. Maybe it was meant to be. Take me to her. You don't have to worry about her anymore. We'll take care I of her. I worry. Just let me see her, please. You can't. She's being prepped for surgery. What the hell do you mean, surgery? The doctors tell me the cordyceps, the growth inside her, has somehow mutated. It's why she's immune. Once they remove it, they'll be able to reverse engineer a vaccine. A vaccine. But it grows all over the brain. It does. Find someone else. There is no one else. Listen, you were gonna show me where she- Stop. I get it. But whatever it is you think you're going through right now is nothing to what I have been through. I knew her since she was born. I promised your mother I would look after her. Then why are you letting this happen? Because this isn't about me. Or even her. There is no other choice here. That bullshit. March him out of here. He tries anything, shoot him. Don't waste this gift, Joel. I don't know if we've been formally introduced to Tess yeah. in the main game before this. I know she plays a I huge role up. in the prologue. Go on. Move. Uh, 
I said move. Give me an excuse. Which way? What the fuck are you doing? Keep walking. I said keep walking. <laughs> Where is the operating room? I ain't got time for this. Where? Holy oh, lord, man. oh my the top god. Floor, the far end. And is that proof that Joel's a little on the, uh, the hardened side? If that's how you want to put it. Okay, so essentially they found that the reason why Ellie is immune is because the, uh, the cordyceps inside of her has mutated. And it grows all over the brain. And so they're trying to operate to get the infection out of her. But of course it's going to kill her it's, if it's all over her brain. It's, it, it's going to kill her. However, they can develop a vaccine out of it. And that vaccine will in turn essentially... Uh, save the entire human race so it seems like a pretty simple trade-off but now joel has all of this um, uh, emotion invested in their relationship and uh so obviously he is not cool with them just operating on her um and then yeah tess she plays a large part in the prologue i kind of know her she's kind of known as like a big sort of firefly character uh, and so, yeah, we got kind of lucky there. Finally, I mean, the whole entire point of the game up to this point is to take Ellie to the Fireflies, and then a whole bunch of crap happens along the way to do that, and we kind of travel across across the country. But this is this is like it. This is like our main objective is complete right now. This is this is new now. Uh, this is all this is all just survival. We don't care about the Fireflies anymore. Uh, from Joel's perspective, anyways, he just wants to kill them now. Uh, so that he can save Ellie from this. He doesn't think that it's worth having Ellie die in all this. I can see where he's coming from, but I mean, ex circumstances are pretty extenuating. So we gotta try and sneak about here. We got two in the main hall with flashlights. I've got my uh, backpack back, so that includes all of my weaponry. Yes, sir. Search the floor. Find that smuggler and shoot him on sight. This is closer to where we started, but we I'm just trying to do this as silently as I possibly can. Stay as far away from from them as I possibly can. We're obviously inside of St. Mary's Hospital. This is obviously one of the floors. Who knows which one? Because there's it's a very hospital-like setting. So at least we kind of know where we're at. Got some supplements. Not quite sure where I'm at here. I can also upgrade my melee weapon, which is definitely worth it in my opinion. Okay, so we're pretty far away supplement-wise in, in upgrading, but we've done everything at least once, so.
Let's do this! <laughs> Pretty much know where I'm at, but... Alright, we've uh, killed the vast majority now. I count two just off in the distance. I picked up a new uh, a new weapon here, which is uh, one that they were carrying. It's just an assault rifle. But uh, that definitely seems to be one of my more powerful options right now for sure. That was it in action right there. Damn it. Alright, so obviously this is going to have to be done much more silently than, uh... So I'm pretty sure this is not where I started, so, so I must have saved somewhere here. It's so funny, you tend, like I always get super quiet in these sneaking situations. It's just intense. I mean, my issue is that they are literally everywhere. Absolutely everywhere. Alright, so I see a, a brightened path up ahead that just says West Wing. I don't think I'm going to find a whole lot here. Probably just some uh, some helpful loot. I can reload in my assault rifle right now, which is probably a good idea to take that forward with me. And then probably the shotgun is my immediate backup. I've also picked up quite a lot of flamethrower ammo, which uh, could certainly come in handy. Alright, let's do it.
Damn, they went right past me. That's good. Search everything to this far. Jeez, man. Damn it. Okay, we got a note, so this will probably be a bit of a quieter area. It's actually a recording, so let's hear it. So that recording kind of reinforces how important um, this discovery of, of immunity in Ellie is. It's, it's comparable to the discovery of penicillin, which is you know one of the greatest um, medical discoveries ever. So um, pretty, pretty intense stuff, pretty important stuff happening. Uh, there's a door that I can enter back there. This seems to be the larger area just over here. Seems to be mostly crafting supplies that they're loading us up with here, not ammunition. But I guess you can get enough ammunition from all the guys that are firing at you anyways. Thanks to having an axe as my uh, melee weapon, that helped in uh, some of that combat, and I was able to hit a save point mid-combat, which uh, took me uh, forward. So when I died there, I actually uh, I got a bit of an advantage. So I think this door probably just leads to the same area that, yeah that this door in that same room we were just in leads to. We got another shiv door, which obviously I will uh, use a shiv to open because there's probably gonna be a lot of crap in here. We got a firefly pendant and some supplements. Firefly pendant is, Jesus. Bryony Stewart Soom. And there's actually a bullet hole in this one. That's pretty neat. And more crafting supplies. Damn. Shotgun shells. Flamethrower ammo. Ammo for my pistol. That's a new melee weapon, but I'm okay with the axe right now. I'm pretty happy. Being able to basically one hit kill everybody without having to even upgrade it. Speaking of which, the whole time I was using it since we restarted after dying, uh, that was uh, after I had upgraded it the first time, so it was killing all those guys without even being upgraded. I was able to do it now. 
Get my shiv back. Get a Molotov. I used one. I can make a couple of them here. It's telling me it's, it would be wise of me to uh, use some health here, but I'm actually going to pass. Alrighty, we're doing okay here. That sign says surgery there, so we should be heading in the right direction. You can see they've got all the quarantine stuff set up from when the outbreak happened. There's probably lots of uh, smaller rooms with loot and whatnot. I like finding the notes. That's one of the main things that pushes me. Notes and ammunition especially. I've stayed on top of... Uh, of crafting and, and having max in, in, in my inventory. This is Marlene's journal. I don't know why I was calling her Tess earlier. Her name is Marlene, not Tess. That was my mistake. March 15th, we finally crossed the Utah border. In a couple of days, we'll be back with the others. Today, the crew was in much better spirits. I've been worried about their morale since Greg and Tanya's passing last week. It's good to hear them laughing again. Robin came up to me and said, Thanks for watching over us, Marlene. It was a small gesture, but I needed it. She's the one from the prologue, Marlene. She is the uh, lady that was just talking to us uh, when we first woke up about Ellie and about doing the surgery. <coughs> If I'm not mistaken, she has a relationship with Tess. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> and uh, we'll see a little bit more of that in the prologue and about her significance with the Fireflies. March 23rd, Ellie never made it. We arrived at the hospital. There was much celebration, at least from the others. I guess they're happy to see their old friends. We haven't seen some of the guys in over 10 years. After they told me the news, I couldn't eat. I couldn't talk to anyone. I should be grateful to just be alive, but right now I just want to shut. <clears throat> <clears throat> I just want to shut my eyes for a bit. God, I hate doing that. March twenty fourth. They look at me, and I know what they're thinking. That we're a bunch of incompetent grunts. What was I supposed to do? I thought I was going to die. My men were being hunted by the entire Boston battalion. I had to get her out of the city. How was I supposed to know the Firefly escorts were already dead? God damn it. I panicked. In the end, I healed pretty damn quickly and my men were more capable than I gave them credit for. More than a handful survived the army's attack. I should have kept her with me. Instead, I handed her off to a couple of smugglers. I failed you, Anna. I failed all of us. I am an incompetent grunt. I can't stand talking to any of them. I don't think I can take the stairs any longer. No way I can stay here. One of our scouts just radioed in. He spotted an older man and a young girl entering the tunnel by the bus terminal. I was in one of our recent episodes. He thinks she might have had red hair, but he's not sure. What if it's her? Stop doing this, Marlene. The recon squad is about to head out. I'm going to rejoin them. When you're lost in the darkness, look for the light. She's alive. They're running the tests on her now. I can't tell if I'm excited, scared, or just nervous. All I know is my hands won't stop shaking. So we did actually come across Marlene. That's right at the beginning of the game. She is the one that handed us over, uh, handed Ellie over to us and instructed that we go meet um, some Firefly correspondents at that Boston Parliament building, we went there, they were found dead, that's the same building that Tess ended up dying in, and then the whole story goes from there, working our way back to here, which ends up being the Firefly headquarters, and here we are. And that journal has uh, is quite significant, uh, simply because it shows that Marlene was given up. She had given up on Ellie, for the most part. She was ready to throw in the towel. And uh, we kind of came, more or less, at the right time. So there's some more voices. Yeah, that's it. I'm coming, Ellie. So we got another stealth situation. Ellie is almost like the last hope. She's the only hope they've ever had in trying to develop a vaccine. This is not your typical teenage girl. I 
because it's kind of selfish of Joel to want to save her. But, I mean, he, he has her in his best interest. And uh, he lost his first daughter, tragically. So, you know, he's kind of holding on to her as, as his daughter, as we've kind of seen him grow into that role of, of being Ellie's father. Got this place locked down, but I should be able to sneak in behind this dude. Quite a bit of noise there, but uh, nobody heard, so we're good. We're almost there. Shouldn't be too much farther. I think I see the doors. Not sure what was up with those guards. They were just kind of uh, resting behind the cover here. Just kind of chilling. They didn't see me or they were too tired to deal with me. Anyways, I strangled them both. We should be good. All right, we got another recorder. This is Marlene's recorder two. Let's hear it. Marlene is not really uh, that far off from being in Joel's shoes because one thing that we find out in the prologue and spoiler alert if you will is that Marlene played a large role in raising Ellie and um, you know a lot of the stuff that Ellie learned uh, uh, came from from Marlene and and um, and the fireflies and they had a big impact with her and and when we when we do the prologue uh, We'll explore that relationship a little bit more, but you know, Marlene, she's going through with this. She realizes that it's not an easy choice. She has an emotional relationship with Ellie as well, but she realizes that um, millions of lives potentially are more important than, than just one. And you know, I, I kind of see where she's coming from. We've come this far, we've worked this far. I mean, what did we think was going to happen? I guess we assumed that they'd be able to save Ellie in the process of developing a vaccine, but um, we could have been dead long ago anyways, and we're still alive. So I mean, it, it's a, it is a tough decision. It's definitely not one that 
I think any of us would would want to have to make in this situation. This outbreak has been really, really hard on Ellie. Um, this is this is the first time, you know, before if you've never played the prologue or if you've only played the main game, this is where you kind of find out that Marlene had a large impact uh, um, on Ellie's live, um, uh, you know, and raising her and whatnot. So, like I said, we'll explore that a little bit more uh, in the prologue moving forward. Uh, and, and again, Tess and Marlene's relationship. and Because this game kind of just starts. It just uh, it's a little bit slow at the beginning and Marlene passes Ellie off to you and, and you don't really get a whole lot of the backstory of, of their relationship. How does Marlene even know Ellie, uh, etc., right? So, uh, yeah. Not gonna say the prologue has all the answers, but it definitely uh, provides a, a, a good understanding uh, uh, of some of that stuff. Sweet Jesus. Doctor? What are you doing in here? I won't let you take her. Just don't come any closer. I mean it. No! Hey, you fucking animal! Carrie, shut the hell up! I had to. I had to. I had no choice. Don't need to kill them, but uh, he was trying to be a hero, and that's what happens. Come on, baby girl. I got you. I got you. <clears throat> <clears throat> oh, shit. Alright, we just gotta try and book it now. Come on. Tell me which way. We're okay. We're okay. Alright, we got an elevator. Seconds later, and that would have officially been the most gruesome thing we've seen in this game so far. You can't save her. Even if you get her out of here, then what? How long before she's torn to pieces by a pack of clickers? That is, if she hasn't been raped and murdered first. It ain't for you to decide. It's what she want. And you know it. Look. You can still do the right thing here. She won't feel anything. Would have been interesting if they allowed sort of a user decision towards the end here that could have like split off into multiple endings, like maybe go ahead with having the cure, but that would kind of uh, prevent um, a proper sequel, I guess, or, or from from being made because there'd be so many different paths that people could choose. But sometimes even just having one big decision at the end of the game is pretty cool. Drugs are still wearing off. What happened? On the fireflies. Turns out there's a whole lot more like you, Ellie. People that are immune. There's dozens, actually. Ain't done a damn bit of good, neither. 
They've actually... They've stopped looking for a cure. I'm taking us home. I'm sorry. Wait! Let me go! Please. You just come after her. We have slowly watched the darkness and all the negative energy consume Joel. He's become this guy that's just pretty much ruthlessly killing at this point. But, I mean, I guess you could argue that in a world like this, you have to play that kind of character to some extent. I still think it's a bit of, he's been a bit more aggressive than what his actual persona is, if that makes any sense. Should be a straight shot through here. So that's pretty cool. We actually get to control Ellie now. The other thing that I wanted to touch on is just the conversation that they had in the car on the way here. I I, I, I don't know. I don't know how much truth there is to to their not being uh, not being a cure. They stopped looking to a cure. Was that just Joel's way of uh, giving Ellie an explanation so that he could just drive off with her and uh, not have to to talk about it again? Just kind of give her like an alternate reality. Uh, I feel like they definitely are still looking for a cure and, and that she could have played a part in that. I think that it was just like a self-defense mechanism on his part to, let's just get Ellie out of here. We never have to think about it again. There is no cure, that's the end of it. That's what I'll tell her. There's dozens of people like you, they've already tried. Or on the other hand, he could be completely telling the truth, and in which case everything that we've done to this point has essentially been pointless. Um, so hell yeah, I would be just as pissed as Ellie is right now if that if that happens to be the case. Just wanted to have a quick look uh, down that little road. Um, we're back on foot here, Jackson City. It's freaking beautiful. Look at that. Holy Christ. Now that is good landscape. Alright. Now watch your head going through. I got it. Feeling my age now. So the prologue you actually play as Ellie, yeah, and it takes you through Ellie's you backstory that. before meeting Joel. Sure, and I used to take hikes like this. I think, uh, I think the two of you would have been would have been good friends. I think you really would have liked her. I know she'd have liked you. I bet I would have. After the whole chasing the deer through the snowy woods craziness with Ellie, the last place I want to be with Ellie is in the woods. Oh. Down there. It's a little bit further now.
Okay, so Jackson City, right? We've been here before. This is essentially <clears throat> the settlement that Tommy is in. I just wanted to confirm some of the details there so I wasn't just spewing fake information. So Marlene is yeah. dead. That's a pretty big death you. in the Firefly community. Give me your hand. All right, come on. Hey, wait. <sighs> Back in Boston? Back when I was bitten? I wasn't alone. My best friend was there. And she got bit too. We didn't know what to do. So... She says... Let's just wait it out. You know, we can be all poetic and just lose our minds together. I'm still waiting for my turn. Ellie. Her name was Riley, and she was the first to die. And then it was Tess. And then Sam. None of that is on you. Oh, you don't understand. I struggled for a long time with surviving. And you... No matter what... You keep finding something to fight for. Now, I know that's not what you want to hear right now. Swear to me. Swear to me that everything that you've said about the Fireflies is true. I swear. Joel is telling the truth uh, about the cure, then, then, then that's cool. But if you just lied straight to Ellie's face, there is no way in hell that she deserves to be lied to after everything that we literally just went through. So that is pretty frustrating. Let's hope that he's not lying about the fireflies not looking for a cure anymore. Hopefully uh, it's just his selfishness. Uh, that's what I think it is. He, he, he lost his daughter at the very beginning, which is the most hurtful thing that he's ever had to go through. And now he's built another relationship with Ellie and, and you know, he can't, he can't cope with another loss. I, I, don't, I don't blame the guy, but he shouldn't. After he just asked, she just asked him to tell the truth. He's just flat up going to lie to her face. I mean, he needs to definitely treat her like an adult. That's, that's an unfair situation. But uh, that kind of leads in a little bit, of, a little bit of the prologue again there too. We heard the name Riley, who is another character that's featured prominently in the prologue. So you get to kind of see the relationship between Ellie and Riley, and Marlene and Tess, and uh, poor Ellie at the end there. She, she, you know, reveals one of the reasons she's so down is her, her survivors, survivors' guilt. Um, everybody around her has died. We'll see in the prologue what happens with. Tess dies, and then, uh, you know, Marlene, all the people that Ellie has come to know have, have all died around her, and she's still alive. And once again, after fighting the whole game to get to the hospital to try and get a cure, still nothing out of it, still no success. She just whisked, whisked away, and now uh, we're back in Jackson City. And it's kind of you know, unsatiated after that, after that ending. Wrong. You know, I feel like there could have been more than just essentially nothing happening. But I mean, I guess there was quite a lot to digest. Um, even if you just look at the the human condition of Joel and about how it has deteriorated, and uh, you know, it's uh, it was good. I, I really enjoyed that. Uh, I hope that you did too. Uh, just have, definitely make sure to uh, leave a like. Uh, subscribe so that you see when everything else is posted and uh, let me know what's up down below
definitely uh, keep your eyes posted. <clears throat> I will uh, get some exciting <clears throat> games uh, coming up uh, that I'm really looking forward to getting started, including another one from Naughty Dog in uh, Uncharted 4, uh, A Thieves' End, which is the one Uncharted game in the main series that I've never played, so uh, that should uh, definitely be pretty exciting. I can kind of see why now the uh, the next piece of The Last of Us is called The Last of Us Part 2 because uh, it seems to be more of a continuation than, an out, than, a, than a brand new standalone kind of title on its own. It will be obviously a standalone title. It's been like what six years now since this game first launched on the PlayStation 3 so um, but I mean the story is literally just a direct continuation or, or I assume it's going to be uh, anyways because there's still a lot of uh, different ways that, that this can go now it's kind of left very open-ended uh, Joel and Ellie are fine they're uh, settling in in Jackson City which is cool to see at least we know they'll be safe they talked about uh, staying there and uh, at least he gets to be close to Tommy and you know Ellie has some stability for a while but that's a lot of trauma to go through uh, to get no results out of it Definitely makes me pretty excited for part two. I'll make sure to post uh, videos of the prologue. I will definitely cover the prologue. It's only about, I think it's only about like a three hour, three, four hour uh, like story expansion, more or less. So we should be able to cover it only within maybe two or three videos, which is pretty cool. It won't take 13. We finished unluck unlucky, lucky number 13, which is exactly what I wanted to do. I kind of had a plan. Uh, you know, I knew I was getting close to the end. Just leave enough time to uh, to finish on 13 here. Sweet. Fish plays. Haha. <laughs> 